to my channel so today's video is going to be the second part of deuteronomy chapter 28 i haven't seen the first part of my video i did the first half which is blessings for obedience and the second part is going to be based on curses for disobedience now before i start i want to say if you have not seen my video on like the I can't remember what I named it. It's about um, battling against the enemy or something. It's not the last video I posted, but the one before that. Um, please go and watch it. I had so, so, I had such a struggle getting that video up. The devil did not, did not, did not, did not want me uploading that video. I usually don't have much of a problem getting things uploaded but that video it was so so difficult for me um it's based on you know ephesians 6 the armor of god now i know what you're thinking you probably know a lot about that um the scripture speaks for itself but i'm telling you guys with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you will learn something just by listening to that video. I would bet on it because of, of God and the Holy Spirit speaking through me, you would learn at least one thing from that video, even if it's something very minor. So please go and watch it or review it. Um, just listen to it and get a review for it because the devil d did not want me getting that video out, okay? There's a reason. I, before I start this, I want to say, yeah, if you haven't seen the first part, go and watch it. It's like an eight-minute video. It's the last video I posted. Um, the blessings for obedience and obeying what God may be speaking to you and the Ten Commandments and everything that's within the Bible, so on and so forth. Go and watch it. Um, you, you won't regret it, okay? So now I'm going to be starting Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. And this begins with curses that come with disobedience to the Lord. And it says, But if you refuse to listen to the Lord your God and do not obey all the commands and the decrees I am giving you today, all these curses will come and overwhelm you. And this is the list of curses that it describes. Your towns and your fields will be cursed. Your fruit baskets and breadboards will be cursed. Your children and your crops will be cursed. Wow, I feel the fire, God. Okay. Um, the offspring of your herds and flocks will be cursed. Wherever you go and whatever you do will be cursed. That sounds absolutely horrible. Um, the Lord himself will send on you curses, confusion, and frustration in everything that you do until at last you are completely destroyed for doing evil and abandoning me. So this could even go for if God is telling you, if God is leading you down one way in your life, um, I, can, I can really testify to this. At one point in my life, God had spoken to me that someone wasn't who I should be with. I was in denial for a, a long time. I went through a period where I was like following God and then these these sort of people wiggle their way back into your life. Um, it's just like the spirit that's influencing them really. Uh, oh, well, I feel like God's told me this, even though you know God's not telling them that. And he's just certainly not telling you that. Um, anyway, through a lot of different things, yeah, God told me, he spoke to me one day, told me, I went on about seven, eight months following God, and then all of a sudden, this person wiggles their way back into my life, I, 
quenched the Holy Spirit and what he was saying to me. I was in denial. I was like, no, like we've given our life to you now, God. Like certainly, you know, David did all these things. I can surely get away with some things like this. Um, I thought I knew best, whatever. I didn't. Fast forward two years from God speaking. Was it two years? It was almost two years. This was January 2019. He spoke to me for that same year, maybe July, July that year. He got back into my life. Um, and then we went all the way until basically like my few days before my birthday is when I cut everything off of 2020. Now that's a long time, but when God speaks and he says something, his word does not return to him void, as the Bible says. And through that time period, there was a great, my life got so much worse in every area of my life. Um, I, school-wise, I'm someone that had straight A's, perfect. Um, all through college, I had straight A's, 4.0. This is just testifying to you guys. Um, and flunked out of nursing school when the pandemic hit it got too hard for me i was always you know someone that got the best grade in all of my college classes like 99s 100s so i couldn't handle nursing school um my health declined tremendously the only area that got better was the relationship itself um but every other, my, my relationships, it was like a spirit of Delilah is what I've been learning about. And that's exactly what it was. Everything, you know, with the flattery and the relationship, I thought it was great. I was losing everyone. Um, everyone around me was, did not like the relationship I was in. And um, yeah, just so on and so forth. Everything around me was literally cursed literally cursed and it was because it was my own fault it was because i thought i knew best and i hushed the spirit of god i didn't want to listen to what he had to say to me until eventually it got so overwhelming that i just couldn't bear it anymore and i was like okay god you know okay 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 like that's it like, i can't handle it anymore i will just let it all go everything's already went down the drain anyway so why not this part of my life too um and I'll follow you and sometimes that's what it takes all right I keep getting interrupted by dogs and whatnot so let's see if now I won't be verse 20 the Lord himself will send on you curses confusion and frustration and everything you do until at last you are completely destroyed for doing evil and abandoning me the Lord will afflict you with diseases until none of you are left in the land you are about to enter and occupy, striking you with wasting disease, fever, and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, and with blight and mildew. These disasters will pursue you until you die. I literally had a lady prophesy that over me, that these things, basically, when you're not in God's will and plan, when you're not fully devoted to God and seeking after maybe what he wants, that allows the enemy to enter in to your life, that right there. And so with that, everything, it was like he, the devil was affecting everything and God was allowing it because I wasn't wholeheartedly pursuing him and his will. Um, yeah, I can testify to many of these things, and I'm sure you know some of you can too. So yeah, the skies above will be as unyielding as bronze, and the earth beneath will be as hard as iron. The Lord will change the rain that falls on your land into powder, and dust will pour down from the sky until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeated by your enemies. You will attack your enemy from one direction, but you will scatter from them in seven. You will be an object of horror to all the kingdoms of the earth. Your corpses will be food for all the, scav the scavenging birds and wild animals, and no one will be there to chase them away. That just sounds absolutely horrible. 
The Lord will afflict you with boils of Egypt and with tumors. Just think of all the people that have tumors, man. Scurvy and the itch from which you cannot be cured. The Lord will strike you with madness, blindness, and panic. You will grope around in broad daylight like a blind person groping in the darkness but you will not find your way. You will be oppressed and robbed continually and no one will come to save you. Mm. You, will be you will be engaged to a woman, but another man will sleep with her. You will build a house, but someone else will live in it. Think of all the people that have lost houses to foreclosures and stuff. Wow. You will plant a vineyard but you will never enjoy its fruit. Your ox will be butchered before your eyes, but you will not eat a single bite of the meat. Your donkey will be taken from you, never to be returned. Your sheep and goats will be given to your enemies and no one will be there to help you. So all of your things, everything, it just will be given. It'll be given away. Everything that you work for, everything that you you get engaged on your own will. You you get your own house and you do your own thing. It will all be taken from you somehow, some way. You will watch as your sons and daughters are taken away as slaves. Your heart will break for them, but you won't be able to help them. Not even like slaves like you think back in the old days but slaves to addictions slaves to like other people relationship wise they just can't get out of that bondage can't get out of that man a foreign nation you have never heard about will eat your crops you work so hard to grow you'll suffer under constant oppression and harsh treatment you will go mad because of all the tragedy you see around you. The Lord will cover your knees and legs with incurable boils. In fact, you will be covered from head to toe. The Lord will exile you and your king to a nation unknown to you and your ancestors. Meaning, interruption number 510. And my dogs are still barking, but I'm going to go on. Um... Your Lord will exile you and your king to a nation unknown to you and your ancestors. There in exile, you will worship gods of wood and stone. Exile, meaning he will give you over, just like, um, think of the Israelites in Egypt. They went into exile. I did a whole study on this in America and where we are. Um, captivity, exile, and there's just, there's just, like five different stages and exile that that means you're abandoned by God your nation is abandoned by the Lord himself so he will abandon you in your nation the Lord will abandon you and your king to a nation unknown to you and your ancestors in an abandonment you will worship gods of wood and stone think of America today but God's going to resurrect this country very soon. You'll become an object of horror, ridicule, and mockery among all the nations to which the Lord sends you. Think of that right now. America, we're in such a state of mockery, our nation. It's, especially with our president, it's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. You will plant much, but harvest little. For locusts will eat your crops. You will plant vineyards and care for them, but you will not drink the wine or eat the grapes, for worms will destroy the vines. Think of that right now, how we do so much, and yet because we are becoming almost like slaves to China, that, you know, make America great again with Trump, we, we ate our own produce. We made our own things. And we sold within the country. Now we buy foreign things. We don't even eat the plants that we grow ourselves. But we have to get them imported in from other countries. You will grow olive trees throughout your land. But you will never use the olive oil. For the fruit will drop before it ripens. You will have sons and daughters. But you will lose them. For they will be led away into captivity. 
Swarms of insects will destroy your trees and crops. The foreigners living among you will become stronger and stronger while you become weaker and weaker. Think of all the foreign people that are flooding into our country. Oh, man. Um, they will lend money to you, but you will not lend to them. And think, man, think of how much we are in debt to China. Mm. But when Roe versus Wade, I prophesied this over a year ago, um, but I did it on Snapchat. I didn't do it on here. Over a year ago, I said Roe versus Wade will be overturned. It will. It will. And um, a curse will be lifted from the nation. And same thing Kevin Zadai said. Said it over a year ago. And now all these people are claiming to have said the same thing. Um, no, Kevin Zadai. If you don't know who that is, go watch him. Great man of God. He's prophesied a lot of things. He's been such an influence on my life spiritually. Um, and he is really in there with God. He really is. They will lend money to you, but you will not lend to them. They will be the head and you will be the tail. If you refuse to listen to the Lord your God and to obey the commandments and the creeds he has given you, all these curses will pursue and overtake you until you are destroyed. But when Roe versus Wade is overturned, I'm going to speak it into existence. Um, there will be a great curse lifted from this nation. This One of these curses that I'm talking about right here in this whole chapter, a big, big curse will be lifted. Um, so that maybe we will come back to know God and know it'll be great revival. These horrors will serve as a sign and a warning among you and your descendants forever. If you do not serve the Lord your God with joy and enthusiasm for the abundant benefits you have received, you will serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you. You'll be left hungry, thirsty, naked, and lacking in everything. The Lord will put an iron yoke on your neck, pressing you harshly until he has destroyed you. The Lord will bring a distant nation among you from the end of the earth, and it will swoop down on you like a vulture. It is a nation whose language you do not understand, a fierce and heartless nation that shows no respect for the old and no pity for the young. Its armies will devour your livestock and crops, and you will be destroyed. They will leave you no grain, new wine, olive oil, calves, or lambs, and you will starve to death. They will attack your cities until all the fortified walls in your land, the walls you trusted to protect you, are knocked down. They will attack all the towns and the land the Lord your God has given you. So these people will just fully come against you and God will allow it because we did not follow him and his ways and, you know, everything that he would want. I'm going to come out with a video on this, but when we do not follow what God wants and what Jesus Christ wants, that is the spirit of the Antichrist. That is everything anti-Christ. So, yeah, I'm going to have a good video. To, yeah, I'm going to have a good video on that coming out um, here eventually. The siege and terrible distress of the enemy's attack will be so severe that you will eat the flesh of your own sons and daughters whom the Lord your God has given you. The most tender-hearted man among you will have no compassion for his own brother and his beloved wife and his surviving children. That just sounds like us today so much. Because he has nothing else to eat during the siege and terrible distress that your enemy will inflict on all your towns. The most tender and delicate woman among you, so delicate she would not so much as touch the ground with her foot, will be selfish toward the husband she loves and toward her own son or daughter. She will hide from them the afterbirth and the new baby she has born, so that she herself can secretly eat them. Oh, God. She will have nothing else to eat during the siege and terrible distress that your enemy will inflict on all your towns. That's exactly what happens when we when we do not follow God. It just gives us unintentionally over to the enemy and all of his plans. Because it's everything anti-Christ when we don't follow him. It, it is. 
not God doing those things, but it's, it's giving legal rights. You yourself and your nation are giving legal right to the enemy to, to start to do these things to you. You refuse to obey all the words of instruction that are written in this book. All the words of instruction that are written in this book. If you do not fear the glorious and awesome name of the Lord your God, then the Lord will overwhelm you and your children with indescribable plagues. These plagues will be intense and without relief, making you miserable and unbearably sick. He will afflict you with all the diseases of Egypt that you feared so much, and you will have no relief. The Lord will afflict you with every sickness and plague there is, even those not mentioned in this book of instruction, until you are destroyed. Though you become as numerous as the stars in the sky, few of you will be left because you would not listen to the Lord your God. Think of all the people. I said this from the beginning of this year. So many people are going to die this year. And this is why. This is why. Though you become as numerous as the stars in the sky, few of you will be left because you would not listen to the Lord your God. God always warns people before they pass away. I've been at parties, um, you know, back when I first started seeking God, I went to a 4th of July party and it wasn't a good party. Um, yeah, I was still, you know, kind of living in the world then. And I remember we were all, you know, drunk at this time, but there were, there were several, uh, several guys in a group talking and they were saying how they know they've had dreams that God was calling them. And, you know, I don't think they ever remember saying this. Um, I don't think they would remember to this day sharing these stories, but every one of them testified on how God, they knew God was calling them, yet they didn't want to come. Many are called, but few are chosen, right? And to this day, they all are Christian, but none of them wholeheartedly serve God. They are still living in the world. And this is two years later. Just as the Lord has found great pleasure in causing you to prosper and multiply, the Lord will find pleasure in destroying you. You will be torn from the land you are about to enter and occupy. For the Lord will scatter you among all the nations from one end of the earth to the other. There you will worship foreign gods that neither you nor your ancestors have known. Gods made of wood and stone. There among those nations you will find no peace or place to rest. Mm, no peace or rest. God will hand you over to those things. Um, and you know, this is, this is ministering and convicting me as well as I'm sure it is most of you guys. Which is a good thing. It's a good thing. You know, consider it great honor if you are still convicted at heart. Because God still cares enough to... To soften your heart to what he's saying and speaking to you. That is all. 
um, this video is kind of long, so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off, and it's gonna take a while to edit. So, so yeah. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope you got something out of it. I hope it puts the fear of the Lord in you, so that you'll want to obey Him in all of His ways, His word, the Word of God, um, what He's speaking to you, and so on and so forth. Anyway, yeah. I love you guys. I hope you have a great day. If you feel led, you can sew into my ministry. I have links below. Um, you know, you reap what you sow. And if you sow abundantly, you will reap many, many more times what you previously sown in the season to come after. You know, you plant one season, the next season you, you harvest what you planted in the season before. So think of it like um every six months you plant well the next six months you're kind of reaping what you previously sown so um you put in the work and the effort this season and you're in there with god and and you're fasting and praying or whatever you're doing it doesn't have to be money um you are gonna see you're gonna you're gonna see the abundance and the multiplication through what you reap in the season to come. So yeah, that's all. Um, I'll be back, of course, as the spirit leads. So bye guys.